The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes white as snow. For fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. You may be seated. Let's begin our reflection time with a prayer. Let's pray. God of victorious love, God of new and eternal life, Open us up to hear, so that we can then live the good news of Jesus. Inspire us to live lives as people joined to the resurrection of Jesus. We pray in his victorious and holy name. Amen. I've had several people ask me, what are you going to say about Easter falling on April Fool's Day? Well, when you think about it, we have just declared the greatest April Fool's joke of all time. We said, Christ is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia. Jesus' resurrection is the greatest joke of all time, but it's also the greatest truth that brings us life and brings us salvation. Now think about it. What is a joke? A joke is a story that has a surprising ending. A joke is is where the, the end is not what you expected at all. There's a twist to it. There's a surprising twist to the end of the story. Jesus rising from the dead was unexpected. It was a twist that the people didn't see coming. Let's think about how this all played out. Let's review the week and see how this played out and see how this good news of great joy, this greatest news of all that Christ is risen and we have life in him 
is not only a great joke, but it is our way of life, our way of salvation. So this week, we recalled how Jesus was clearly focused on his mission. He knew his mission was to be about serving, and he knew his mission was also to be a suffering Messiah. Jesus was driven by his mission of being the Savior, which he also knew meant dying. Death was part of Jesus' mission. Death in order to rise victorious. To fulfill his mission, Jesus had to submit. Submit to the control of other forces. The forces of human sin laid hold of Jesus. Uh, he accepted the betrayal of Judas and the arrest of the temple guards and police. He submitted to the control of the religious leaders and to the rule of Herod and Pontius Pilate. Jesus was subjected to mocking and ridicule. He allowed the soldiers to torture him, to spit on him, letting human sin show its worst. The worst of our human sin, the dark side of our lives, the urge to tease and to hurt and to torture was shown in the cruelty of the soldiers. People in authority used their power unjustly and in order to oppress Jesus. Human pride and corruption was seen in the religious leaders and in the crowd of people. The worst of humanity was in full force in the way Jesus was treated in the last days and the last hours of his life. He was abused, he was abandoned, he was betrayed, he was tortured, he was nailed to a cross and put to death. And then his lifeless body was closed in a tomb. And the entrance of the tomb sealed with a huge stone. Powerful forces. Powerful forces of human sin, forces of evil, controlled and dominated Jesus, subjecting him to the deepest and darkest side of humanity. He experienced the cruelty in us that scares us, but the cruelty in us that is a part of us. It was a rough week for Jesus under the control of human sin and evil and death. And today, we celebrate the unexpected, the unheard of, the twist in the story. Today, we celebrate the great surprise. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. From human cruelty, from the dominance of evil, from the grip of death, Jesus emerges from the tomb alive. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The greatest joke ever told. Jesus is alive. But it's no joke. This is the truth that brings life to the world. It brings victory to our lives. It brings forgiveness over our sin. It brings us to life in the greatest power of the universe. The power of God's love. The greatest power in the universe is the power of God's love. Nothing can defeat the power of God's love. As we gather today, we hear a very different story. A very different story from where we ended on Friday. Today is the story of Jesus. We see who is really in control. Today we see real power. Today, Jesus is in control. Jesus is 
out of the control of human sin. He's out of the control of the evil forces. Today, Jesus is released from the grip of death. Jesus is out of con the control of Judas, out of the control of the temple guards and the police. He's out of the control of the religious leaders and the crowds. He's out of the control of Herod and Pontius Pilate. He's out of the control of the soldiers and the people who mocked him and tortured him. He's out of the control of the dark and cold tomb. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Today Jesus is alive to bring his power to life. Uh, to, to all of us. And to the corruption within us. To our brokenness and to our hurting lives. Jesus comes to us to bring his power. Today, Jesus is in control to bring forgiveness to our sins, compassion to our cruelty, love to our hate, healing to our injury, freedom to our oppression, and even life to our death. Jesus is out of the control of sin and evil and death, and he brings his power of love and life and salvation. He's on the loose. He can't be contained. He can't be controlled. He's on the loose, uh, out to bring healing to, and healing love to those, even those who abandoned him, his disciples, even to Peter, Peter who denied even knowing him. Jesus offers forgiveness even to those who tortured him. And he offers life even to those who put him to death. Jesus is out of human control and now he's free. Free to bring the power of life. And where is he going? Where is Jesus going? Jesus is released from the tomb. So where is he going? We heard him say it. He's going to Galilee. He said it several times. I'm going ahead of you to Galilee. Why Galilee? <laughs> what is Galilee? Galilee is home. Jesus is going home. Galilee is home for his disciples. Galilee is home for Jesus. Jesus is going home. The message, the good news is Jesus has been raised from the dead and indeed he's going ahead of you to Galilee. He's going to your home. There, at home, you'll see him. Jesus is going home for Peter and for the other disciples. Uh, that, that's where they first met him, in Galilee. Jesus is going to Galilee and there they will see and they will know Jesus risen. You think about it for the disciples. It's been the worst days of their lives. Uh, they all abandoned Jesus when he needed them the most. Uh, when the going got tough, they ran. Even Peter. Peter, the rock, denied even knowing Jesus. And they took Jesus away. The disciples failed. The disciples failed Jesus, their teacher, their master. And they let themselves down. They disappointed each other. The worst days of their lives. What are they to do? Where are they to go? There in Jerusalem with all these threats around. Uh, with guilt weighing them down, uh, with their crushed hopes and dreams, uh, paralyzed in fear. Jesus was dead. The disciples filled with fear, uncertainty, desperation. And then, and then, the message came. You can go home now. You can go home now to Galilee and Jesus will meet you there. There you will see him. 
This is good news for us to take to heart today also. This is the good news for us to take into the depth of our spirits. Jesus is going to meet us at home too. Think about it. Home, home is where we're most comfortable. Uh, home is also where real life happens. Home is where we really need to hear and experience the good news of Jesus. Home is, is where we too need forgiveness. Forgiveness for our broken relationships. Forgiveness for where, where we have failed. Where we have let others down. Where we have hurt others. Uh, home is where we need to experience a healing love. A home is where we deal with real life. A home is where we deal with the news of cancer. Home is where we have our sleepless nights of worry. Home is where we need Jesus. Home is also where we celebrate and share life and where we enjoy life together. And Jesus meets us there too. Jesus meets us at home in our, in our real lives. He's not dead in a tomb, defeated, but risen, alive, and going to meet us at home and even here. Because of Jesus' resurrection, we can have comfort and peace, forgiveness, the real love of God, because of Jesus, we can be at home with God. We can be at home with God in this true peace that Jesus brings to us. In our awful, horrible experiences in life, in our grief and in our suffering, and most powerfully in our death, the good news comes to us. Jesus is going ahead of you. Jesus will meet you at home. Jesus is always going ahead of us. Always going ahead of us to make a way for us. To be the way for us. Jesus is not controlled by death anymore. He's not controlled by sin anymore. He's going ahead of you to meet you at home. There you will see him just as he told you. So right where you are today, wherever you are today, in your life, in your spirit, in your grief, in your guilt, Jesus comes to meet you with a power that is greater than your sin, a power that is greater than your guilt, to meet you with a love that you don't deserve, but a love that will bring you to life. He knows our hurts and to our hurts he offers healing. He knows our grief. And to our grief he offers a real and true, deep and lasting peace. Wherever you are, the resurrected Jesus comes to you to bring you freedom and forgiveness. Healing and hope comes to bring you eternal life. The good news for us today and for every day and the good news for us in our death The good news of eternity is Jesus is in control. Jesus is going ahead of you. He will meet you there. You are at home with Jesus every day and forever. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. <laughs>